set to rise for many. We've tightened our belt really as far as we can possibly go. There, there is no more spare money at the end of the month. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. After five years of rock bottom interest rates, the Bank of England has warned that it must soon raise the bank's base rate, a move that will have a profound impact on borrowers, savers and businesses across the country. ITV News business editor Joel Hills finds out what people are doing to prepare for the inevitable and whether for some even small increases might push them over the edge in when interest rates rise. In the autumn of 2008, a financial crisis almost wiped out the world's banking system. It's difficult markets, very difficult markets. Everyone's very tense. Century-old companies collapsed overnight. The country plunged into recession. Faced with panic, the Bank of England cut interest rates from 5% to 0.5% in just six months. It then began creating billions of pounds of new money. It became cheaper to borrow. Savings rates slumped. The bank wanted us to keep spending. Now the bank is signalling that the worst may be over, that soon interest rates will increase again. There's already great speculation about the exact timing of the first rate hike. It could happen sooner than financial markets currently expect. After that, expectations shifted. The first interest rate rise is now anticipated early next year. And whatever stage you are at in the journey of life, it's likely that a change in rates will have an impact on your finances. The reason there is so much interest in what happens to interest rates is that when they rise, the impact will be felt by more or less everyone living in Britain, by borrowers, families with a mortgage, but anyone with any form of debt, by savers people with cash in the bank, but also anyone with money in other forms of investments like shares. And let's not forget businesses. They are the backbone of the British economy. And large or small, they all depend on access to overdrafts and bank loans. So when the Bank of England fires the starting pistol, fortunes are set to change. And there will be losers as well as winners. <laughs> For years, it looked like we'd stalled, but now even the governor of the Bank of England is saying the recovery has momentum. This programme will look at just how higher interest rates will impact on all of us. We'll show you how rate rises will push up mortgage repayments and what that will mean for your family's finances. We'll look at poor old savers. They've had every reason to feel glum, but will rate rises really put them back in the fast lane? And we'll see how many small businesses worry that higher interest rates will mean lower profits. But first, I went to speak to one of the nine men and women who set interest rates. I asked the Deputy Governor of the Bank of England, Ben Broadbent, why to date he has voted to keep rates so low for so long. Generally speaking, the emergency is over, isn't it? Certainly it's the case that we're in a much better place than we were several years ago. The financial system, the banking system specifically, and is a much better place. But our economy and developed economies across the world are still feeling the after effects of the cataclysmic financial crisis that we suffered some years ago. The message from the bank is clear. The point at which interest rates will rise is getting closer. But out on the street, is that message being picked up? Damien Fay thinks it is, up to a point. He runs a money advice website. But the reality is that people underestimate how much an impact an interest rate rise will have on their own finances. So the problem is people aren't planning of where they're going to find that extra money. Damien talked to shoppers about their borrowing at this retail village outside York. He wanted to see how prepared they are for their mortgage costs to start creeping up. If interest rates go up to by 2%, what sort of increase are we thinking about then? I would say... 50? 50 pounds? So between 50 and 60? The increase would be about 82 pounds. Right. How, how surprising is that? 
more than what we thought. Yeah, it's more than what we thought, so obviously we've underestimated that, so yeah, it's more than what we thought. At the moment, we're just kind of sitting tight until something happens. <laughs> yeah, enjoying the low interest yeah, yeah. rates. When it starts to go back up, which inevitably it will, how do you think it's going to impact you? Um, well, to... we'll live tight, you know, yeah. we'll have to watch our shopping. So we won't be able to come to designer out there as much. <laughs> You've got a mortgage. I have got a mortgage, yes. My salary hasn't increased since 2008. If mortgage interest rates rise, then I'm going to be paying so much more money out of the same amount of pay that I was earning all those years ago. So I'm absolutely nervous and I'm absolutely petrified. Nobody wants interest rates to go up. Well, if you're on a tracker mortgage, and interest rates are currently at half a percent, and they go to 1%, your repayments will about double. So that is a huge increase for anybody, even though it's only half a percent. The normal level of interest rates you might think of is somewhere around 3%. Now, from half a percent to 3%, that is six times the amount that you might be paying now. Research from the Money Advice Service suggests that nearly half of people with mortgages would struggle if their repayments went up by up to £150 a month, and one in five mortgaged homeowners would have problems with any rise at all. The same survey of 3,000 people found that more than two-thirds of them were already stretched when they took out their mortgages, so it's no wonder that the Bank of England is having to think very carefully about when rates rise and by how much. Our best estimate at the moment of, of highly geared households, these households spending more than a third of their income on mortgage repayments, is around about one million. So that's just over one in 10 of, of households with mortgages. As and when interest rates start to rise, let's say they go to 3% by 2018, which is what's expected at the moment, then our, our, our best estimate then is that that one million figure becomes 2.3 million. And that's more like one in four of all mortgages. But these are projections, of course. So what did the Bank of England think? How many households in the UK do you judge to be highly indebted and therefore vulnerable? I don't think one can say specifically a number. But I suppose the point is that could be a very large number, couldn't it? And the, the, the suggestion here is that, a, from some quarters, that quite a modest rise in interest rates could cause hardship. I would lean against the view, I think, that any rise in interest rates would cause a sort of calamity for a very large number of households. I think that's an exaggeration of where we are at the moment. Well, it, what it, I'm getting to here, uh, Ben, is really simple. It's that we have you know, repeatedly bumped into people who are quite anxious about the situation they're in and quite anxious about interest rate rises. And I think they probably want some reassurance that you have some idea when you put interest rates up absolutely. what the impact is going to have. First of all, the pace of increase will probably be more gentle than in the past. And secondly, that the point we're likely to get to after this period of rising interest rates will be materially lower than in the past. Stephen Ray is a school teacher who lives in Lincolnshire with his two young children. His wife also works in the public sector. When we were looking to move uh, around about the time we got married, we were looking for a, a larger house that a family could grow into. We opened the door and we could see right through the hallway, dining room, kitchen, straight into the garden, all in one shot. Uh, and as soon as we walked across the door, we just knew that this was the house for us. When you have memories such as the boys coming home from the maternity ward, the family coming to stay, uh, it's become sentimental. Stephen and his wife have not seen a pay rise in the last four years. Stephen believes any increase in their mortgage repayments would put serious financial pressure on the family. The mortgage alone uh, accounts for about 40% of our family income. Uh, the utilities, that will probably be a, about another 40%. Uh, so that doesn't leave us with a, a significant amount spare. And once you take into account shopping and any other family or home or car emergencies uh, that crop up during the month, even just 1% increase, would be increasing our living costs by 150, 160 pounds. 3% just would be unaffordable. We've tightened our belt really as far as we can possibly go. There is no more spare money at the end of the month. Stephen currently has a variable rate mortgage, which means his repayments rise and fall along with the Bank of England's base rate. With that rate set to rise, Stephen has decided to change his mortgage. He wants to fix his monthly repayments for the next five years by applying for a fixed-rate mortgage. 
knowing that our mortgage was due to run out at the end of the month and being a little bit worried about possible uh, interest rate rises as indicated by the press. And so I've spent a lot of time on the internet and we've come to the conclusion that now seems to be the best time to change my mortgage uh, and also to tie in for as long as possible. Fixed rate deals are dearer, but Stephen and his family are prepared to pay a bit more today for the certainty of knowing what their mortgage repayments will be tomorrow. A fixed rate mortgage won't suit everyone. Good boy. As far as people switching to fixed rate deals, we've already seen a massive movement towards fixed rates. Now, for some people, that is the right thing to do, whereas for others, it's, it, you may not need to do that and you may be able to get much better rates and put some money aside for when interest rates move forward. So it's one of these myths, I think, that we always think, oh, when they're going up, it is better to fix. It is for some, it isn't for others, but it is something you need professional advice on for your personal circumstances. While some of the country are worrying about how they will cope when rates rise, a whole other group is wondering how they will cope until rates rise. Because while the stock market has performed well for investors, for people putting money away in the bank each month, low rates have been a disaster. Interest rate rises can't come soon enough for savers with cash. For almost six years now, they have had a miserable time. Returns on their savings have collapsed. In fact, get this, money in the bank has probably been losing value with interest rates lower than inflation. Very low interest rates are unfair to the poorest savers in the economy, those who really need income from their savings. They've done very badly over the last few years. And the bad news for them, in the next few years, that's unlikely to change. If you have been really prudent throughout your life and you've put 30, 40, 50,000 pounds away, you've got it in a savings account. Sadly, the effect is, because the saving rates are, in other words, the return that you get is lower than inflation, so in other words, the cost of living that you're experiencing, it means it's really eroded the money that you've got in your back pocket. Trish and Angela are sisters. They live opposite each other, just outside York. Proud homeowners both. They had mortgages to pay 23 years ago when interest rates hit 13%. Today, they are mortgage-free and watching the real value of their savings shrink. So you feel that you were clobbered by high rates then and you're being clobbered by low interest rates now? Precisely, yeah. Because the interest rates, when I bought a house, they were sky high. And now I've paid for my house and I think, you know, I'll put a little bit of savings away, make a little bit of money for when my husband, because he wants to retire, but he can't. The interest rates have dropped right down here. So, uh, again, the vit it is again, and, and it's so annoying that they were taking all that off us before and now I want them to give me it. it they've, taken it, they've taken it away again. So, Tricia, you've got money in the bank, you've got money in your ices. Yeah. What sort of interest are you getting on your savings? Well, what's getting on the current account, you would get, was it, how much? Three percent. So we did that, we thought that was great, you know, and then that changed again. Does it just give you that? You think, oh, that's lovely. You don't think it's going to change. And all of a sudden you get a letter there to say, it's going to change now in November. To go back down to one and a half percent. And same as the ICES. I so do you're still saving, spend. despite low interest rates, you are still saving. I'm still saving. Trish, but you're feeling a bit... I'm a bit, bit pinched, actually, yeah. I'm just hoping that it'll change and it'll go, you know, things will, will alter. You know, you feel sometimes where well, you've lost out, really. And that is looking at your statements and thinking, well, you know, it should be better than this. It doesn't yeah. give you any incentive at all to save. It might as well be sat in my kitchen on my side than be in the bank. So what I'm doing, I'm spending. <laughs> and she really is. Most of her savings are now sitting on her drive. <laughs> this, this is your yes. mistake? It is, yes. <laughs> Can we have a look inside? Yes. Wow. You spent the majority of your savings on a mobile home with hindsight. Is that something you regret? No, because when we go away now, it's, it saves us on hotels, eating out, eating. Um, we can sit outside under the awning, read but, my but book. You, but you spent most of your savings. Yeah, I wouldn't have spent that if it had been making anything, but it's not making anything, so I thought we might as well spend it. At least we've got something now to show for it, which we didn't have in the bank. 
So there was no point saving. Angela spent the money. Do you ever get a bit envious? I do, yes, because when I come with my dogs, you know, to, to, with my dog to go for a walk, and I, off, I always look at this and think, oh, you know, this is what I could have had if my money isn't now where it is. And I, is it, do, have I done the right thing? The money's sitting but there. The money's it's not sitting getting there. much interest. It must be really just, tempting. I'm just doing a waiting game, actually, actually, really, because I'm waiting for things to change. How, how long are you going to give the Bank <laughs> of England before you get a mobile home? <laughs> oh, I don't know. We're getting on a bit, aren't we? So, really, it's going to be... It has to be soon. Every economy needs people to be putting money aside for their future, investing for the long term, not just living for today. The worry here is that if you punish a generation of savers, if you keep interest rates so low that basically the message is you're a mug to save, then it will be very hard to persuade people in future to start saving. For some time, money in the bank for many people has been losing value. And we've seen evidence, and there is evidence, of people who are actually spending their savings. Do you worry that interest rates are actually starting to incentivize unwise behavior? Well, it is very important uh, that people understand that in the end, as I say, this is on an unusually low level of interest rates. And they do not take decisions, particularly decisions with longer term consequences, based on the erroneous expectation that they will be here forever. But there's no incentive to save currently. That's actually quite dangerous, isn't it? Well, there is some incentive to save, maybe not in the shortest term deposits. Okay, so other things are incentive to save in. Do you acknowledge, though, in the process of doing that, there are, there are a large number of people who feel it's been rather unfair, they've been unfairly treated by the Bank of England? I certainly acknowledge that there are people who have suffered from the fact that everywhere around the world interest rates are very low. But we had to do that in response to the financial crisis. Had we not responded that way, we would have been, all of us, in a much worse position than we are. The Bank of England's job is to act in the interest of the whole economy, but its actions impact different groups differently, from borrowers to savers and, of course, businesses. One of the reasons the Bank of England has kept interest rates so low for so long is to help businesses get access to credit, to incentivise them to invest and create jobs. Well, it's been an attempt to bump-start the recovery. It's taken some time, but it appears to have worked. The economy is really motoring now. Or at least that's the claim. Whether you're a sole trader with a loan or a small business trying to grow, low rates have helped you stay on track. So what will a rise in rates mean for you? The Williams family have been selling cars for four generations. Their business has survived two world wars and several economic downturns. Their luxury car showroom in the Cotswolds exports to Europe, China and New Zealand. We see ourselves very much as a small business selling a, selling a dream. It is a luxury product. People don't buy them for transport. But predominantly, we are a small British business. The order book here is full, thanks in part to record low interest rates. I think we sell cars pretty much every week to someone that says, do you know what, my money's not earning me anything in the bank, so I'm going to come and buy a Morgan with it. Well, we could have a bit of a triple whammy, really. If interest rates go up and people decide to keep their money invested rather than buying a luxury product, we would lose out a little there. But we've got a huge value of stock. And if we do have to raise some funding from the bank to uh, pay for that, it's going to cost us a lot more. But the other thing that it hits us on is on exports. We will see a change in the pound, the value of the pound. If it goes up, our inquiries coming from abroad go down. So we could be hit three times on if, the, if those rates go up. The British Chamber of Commerce represents businesses that employ five million people. It has warned that the recovery is not secure and says interest rate rises would be premature. I do stay awake at night sometimes, sort of thinking about business progression 
um, and how changes over the next few years are going to affect us and affect how we're going to look after our staff in the future. Businesses like low interest rates, they actively lobby in many cases for them. The people that we've spoken to have often expressed the anxiety though that the, the, the recovery is so fragile that any rise in interest rates now would be folly because it would choke off the recovery. What would you say to that? Well, I don't know if we use the word folly, but these are precisely the debates we have on the Monetary Policy Committee. And where do you use that? Um, well, the question of the balance of risk. There is no simple answer that is either unavoidable or folly. Right? And every month we come back and we look at the evidence and we think about these things. I'd say what I said earlier in response to households, it's not the case that any rise in interest rates would push all the businesses into penury. That's simply not true. It's a matter of judgment. Um, but nevertheless, we again, just as with households, have to be mindful not to increase that burden too quickly and only to do so in response to a st strong and sustainable recovery in the economy. Sooner or later, the cost of borrowing money will go up. But what can we do to protect ourselves from what's to come? Rates have been so low for so long because it was the right thing to do. It saved the world. However, we've all got addicted to this right now, and we look upon it as the only solution. We're addicted to cheap money. It's monetary methadone, and we've got to wean ourselves off that addiction. And that's going to be the, one of the great challenges of the next few years. I think the key thing for, for households at the moment is to, is to really do an MOT, a financial MOT. Think about um, the finances. As and when interest rates start to rise, does that look affordable? If not, what can we do about it? Is that remortgaging, refinancing? Is it somehow in increasing income? Is it cutting back in other areas? So now is the moment in which people can start to, to look at their finances and think about how will they handle it as and when interest rates rise. The Bank of England is repeatedly reminding us that at some point, and possibly soon, the men and women of the Monetary Policy Committee who meet in this room will decide it's time to increase interest rates. And by telling us this, the bank is hoping we'll prepare for it. Interest rate rises, when they happen, we're told, will be gradual and limited. But that's an expectation. It's not a promise. The last time the committee met, they voted 7-2 to two to keep everything on hold. Soon we'll find out if their thinking has shifted. Six years on from the financial crisis and the unprecedented intervention of central banks around the world, we are entering a new phase. In one sense, higher interest rates actually indicate a return to more normal times, and this is something to celebrate. But for some, and we don't know how many, the readjustment could prove extremely challenging. The Monetary Policy Committee will meet next week to decide whether to raise interest rates this month. Now, if you'd like to see what a rate rise could mean for your mortgage repayments, please visit our website at itv.com.